me. But Sabine, I've got four more questions. If you don't mind, we'll try to keep it in under five minutes. Do you mind answering my fantastic four questions? Uh, I'll do my best. Okay. Um, so the first question I ask is um, really revolves around your life and the brevity of life. The Stoics say we should meditate daily on the fact that we're all going to die. Um, in the Bible, uh, it is said that the righteous live to be 120 years old. Uh, so we're about, you know, a third or a half of the way there in my case, maybe a third of the way there in your case. Anyway, I want to ask you, Sabina, when you do depart from this chunk of space dust, um, what wisdom or values do you most want to leave in what's known as an ethical will, or in Hebrew, it's called a zava'ah. It's basically something that contains your personal wisdom for both your biological children and your ideological children. Oh, Jesus, that's a big question. Um, so... I guess I guess what I'm 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 trying to communicate a lot is that um, we're all in this together on this planet. Um, we're not single individuals, and we have to think about how we interact with other people on a global scale. And I think I would like to leave behind a little bit more awareness about um, how difficult it can be to make sense of human interaction on such a large scale like like we see it for example uh, on social media like i think this is something that has brought the issue to a lot of people's attention but it's also something of course that we we see in politics right yes exactly um thank you sabina for that answer the next uh question revolves around a far more distant future event which is billions of years from now, perhaps, if you've ever seen the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, by uh, renowned science fiction author Sir Arthur C. Clarke, um, who is the namesake for the institute here that I um, associate director of, the Arthur C. Clarke Center for Human Imagination. Anyway, there are these monoliths and these apes and primates see them, and then they kind of go around the universe, and we're not really sure what they are. But I want to ask you, if you had a time capsule, that would last for a billion years and you want to put on it or in it, you know, not a CD ROM or something, but you want to put something in it that summarized the grandiosity of humanity of what we had achieved maybe in science. Um, and you wanted to do so, uh, what would you put on this monolith? What, what would you put in it? What fact or attribute of human accomplishment is most worthy to brag about to some future alien civilization? So I, I guess I'm afraid I would I would go for something obviously high tech, uh, you know, whatever's available at the time, maybe a quantum computer, uh, something like this. If I don't have a quantum computer, maybe just a phone, uh, just something that shows, look, that at least we got that far, right? Yeah, and <laughs> we made newsletters, which you sub subscribe to. Um, great. Okay, <laughs> now uh, the last two questions. <laughs> That's right. We tweeted. Okay. Uh, second to last question, Savina. Another quote from Sir Arthur C. Clarke, who says, when a distinguished but elderly scientist says something is possible, they are most certainly right. When they say something is impossible, they are very probably wrong. I want to ask you, Savina, what have you most recently changed your mind about? Not that you're elderly, but... What have you changed your mind about in science? Well, I, I constantly change my mind back and forth on a couple of questions. One of them is like, is it modified gravity or dark matter? <laughs> like, I, I think I've switched back and forth uh, a couple of times. And, uh, another thing that, that we um, touched on is the question, um, do gravitons exist? Uh, like is gravity actually quantized um, or is it is it emergent uh, and you really only have gravitational waves so, so so those are a couple of things that I switch back and back and forth on um, yeah I, I, I guess that during this whole pandemic thing uh, I've also changed my mind on some issues of science communication uh, if that counts 
um, I see that there, there's a big virtue in getting things out in a simple form. Uh, I guess it's not so surprising that as a scientist myself, I, I err uh, on this on the side of too much information, right? Because I'm always like, they need to know all this in all the asterisks and the fine print. But uh, I, I think I realize that there, there are situations where this just doesn't work. You, you know, you, you have to put out a simple message and just tell people what to do. Very good. Okay, Sabina, the final fourth question of my existential questions, as I called them, even before you wrote this wonderful book, Existential Physics, uh, is uh, revolving going back in your own personal world line. And it uh, is relevant to Sir Arthur C. Clarke's so-called third law. And he said, the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past them into the impossible. And guess what? That's how I got the name of my podcast. Very creative, isn't it? I'm going to ask you, Sabina, going back in your life, what mysterious aspect of your life perplexed you when you were a 20-year-old or a 30-year-old? And yet, looking back through the lens, the telescope of time, uh, now would you tell yourself, you'd give yourself advice as a 20-year-old to give you the courage to do what you've done and go into the impossible? Well, so I don't, I'm afraid I don't really know how to answer this question. I, I think if I look back uh, when I got interested in physics, it was pretty much through the impossible. Uh, it, it, was, it was through science fiction and, you know, hyperdrives and, and, and all that kind of fancy stuff that they have in science fiction. And I wanted to know how much of it is actually true. Like, you know, how much of it is real science? How much can you actually do? Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe for me that that's that's the thing. I I kind of secretly believe <laughs> that it's actually possible to travel faster than the speed of light. Um, not within the theories that we currently have, uh, but that may not be the end of the story. Maybe the aliens will tell us, right, Sabina? Um, well, Sabina, it's In, been indeed, a delight as this always. Was Sorry, if I, if I can just add to this, like, this is why I think it matters, because um, if there are aliens out there and they have further developed technology, they would be using the faster than light drive, right? <laughs> That's right. Exactly. That's the, uh, the promise that aliens hold for us if it's not indeed religion. And it is an existential matter in any case. And Sabine, I want to thank you. Uh, for everything you do uh, around the world, inspiring literally millions of people through your videos, your books, uh, your blog, your newsletter, all of which I subscribe to. And and you should, too, and get this wonderful new book and her first book, Lost in Math. It's a beautiful uh, a, a companion to these two. Uh, anything else you'd like to mention, Sabina, that you're uh, like my viewers and listeners to know about? No, I mean, um, I, this is just wonderful love talking to you. I think you, you have a great channel uh, with, with a lot of super interesting interviews. Thank you, Savina. That means the, that means the multiverse to me. <laughs> <laughs>